All right, guys, we're going to talk about a new project here. You know, one of my favorite things is electronic ignitions for Onan NB engines on Gravely 430 and Gravely 424 tractors. So doing a little research lately, I found that you can make a new kind of crank trigger. It's a lot cheaper to make than the first generation that I've done. And this one here uses a Chevy LS2 ignition module in order to do that one. So I'm gonna go through some parts here that we got and show you guys what we're doing and we'll see what we got. The first thing I got here is a new uh, soldering station from Amazon. It's made by a company called Xtronic. I haven't even opened it yet, so this will be the unboxing and we'll see what it's all about. It's not very expensive. It was about $55 for this thing. And I've always wanted a soldering station for a long time. I use a soldering gun for most things, but when you do precise soldering, a gun is too big and bulky. And it makes a little too much power as well, which makes it undesirable for fine work. So let's see, this thing here is a, Amazon special. I'll put a link in the video to it when we're done. But it's supposed to have a little soldering gun, a station, a digital temperature control, um, various accessories. Let me see what this is all about. They don't make this stuff easy to, to unwrap, unfortunately. But yeah, this is the spring loaded thing that will hold the soldering gun. I assume that goes in there. And then the gun itself looks pretty nice. That will go in here. They give you a little sponge and a, a thing to wipe off the tip on to clean the soldering off with. Let's see, it has these things here which are like little um, adjustable alligator clips so you can hold your work while you're soldering. And these I believe just thread into the side of this thing. One goes on each side. If you ever try to solder little parts together, one of the worst parts about it is trying to hold them steady so you can solder them. So these little helper hands are one of the main reasons that I actually purchased this product. Look at that. You can bring them right up to where you're working and clip your stuff in there. And I think that's gonna be real nice. Um, this is the sponge they give you for cleaning the tip. Looks just like a piece of kitchen sponge. Then they gave you a little bit of solder and a variety of different tips with this one. You could have bought a cheaper model that didn't come with all those tips. Um, I have no idea what this rubber thing is. I'll have to read the directions, but it's kind of a rubber cutout with a bunch of stuff. Um, and we got some other parts over here. So I'll have to read the directions and see what that's all about. Now, the next part of this equation here is that let me get this stuff out of the way is that we got a ton of boxes from different online parts sources so some might be rock auto some might be amazon some might be ebay um, some i've opened some i haven't opened let me try to find the most important part here this is going to be our most important part an ac delco ls2 coil and these are used on a lot of GM cars. And let's take a look at this coil. So this coil is pretty small. It has a plug on the bottom that has four pins on it. And it has a spark plug output over here. This coil has all the electronic ignition module components built right into it. If you've ever seen any of my older videos, we use a crank trigger and then we have to have a separate um, ignition module. The first generation I did, I used the GM HEI module. The second generation, I used a Chrysler ignition module. Well, those parts are pretty old technology. I'm not gonna say they're getting hard to find, but they're not as prevalent as this little gizmo. And 
in my other setup, we had to buy a 12 volt coil like you'd use on a Kohler. We had to buy the module. And by the time you bought all that stuff, you could have been into it for 80 or $90 of parts. This thing here I bought, I think it was $22 and it's got everything in it and it's small and it's compact and it looks a lot cooler than the other stuff. It's less bulky. It's easier to hide on your engine, however you want to say it. So that's part of it. And let's see, what else do we got here? <clears throat> Let me go through this box here. Then we got this crank trigger here. This crank trigger is a part number called PC2. And that's a, also a GM crank trigger, PC2. Now, the guy that I learned all this from, his name is Ed. I, I jokingly call him the mad scientist of electronic ignitions, but he really knows his stuff. And he knows that the input signal to this GM module has to be a certain property, let's say. And that property has to be no greater than five volts DC power. When you run these crank trigger modules, it basically, when the flywheel goes around and it goes by this, it makes a little electrical pulse of voltage, almost like a stator does on your engine. There's a magnet in here and that's what drives it. So this particular trigger makes an AC power when you use it and we need DC power. So what Ed has done is he's, I don't see it here, it's somewhere else, but we had to get some diodes and here we go. Here they are. I got a 50 pack of little diodes. These diodes limit the voltage to five volts. They'll cut off after that. So if this thing starts making six volts or seven volts or eight volts, it's not going to trigger this module correctly because the reading is too high. So these diodes will limit the voltage to five volts and that will allow us to make our ignition module work at higher RPMs. It's kind of like a stator. The lower the RPMs you turn, the lower the voltage it makes. The higher the RPMs you turn, the higher the voltage it makes. So let's open this other package here. In this package here, we have rectifiers. Now, a rectifier is going to take that AC power that comes out of this module and turn it into the DC power that we need in order to run this trigger. Um, the rest of the parts that I got here are some various electrical wires and connectors. These here are little connectors that are supposed to crimp onto these pins inside of these different plugs. You could buy pigtails. Pigtails are pretty expensive compared to these pins. I got this pack here, it's a 25 pack. I'll put links to all this stuff in the description. Um, the only other thing that we purchased was a spark plug wire. Now you don't have to purchase this, but this particular coil uses a big boot. I don't even have any of those boots. So if we can get a prefab wire that goes in there and goes up to our spark plug on our engine, um, it'll, it'll make it easier. So the next step here is that I got to read the directions to the soldering gun or soldering station, figure out how to hook all that up and we're gonna solder some of this junk together and try to make our ignition. Stay tuned. Let's talk a little bit more about those diodes again. So to recap, I, I used the word bridge rectifier and the guy that I took these ideas from, Ed, he at one point had a bridge rectifier. Then he changed to using a diode. And this little diode here will turn the AC power into DC power. This other diode here called a Zener diode is the one that's gonna cap off the voltage at the 5.1 volts, which this is a 5.1 volt Zener diode. So let's check it out. Now in Ed's circuit, you can see inside of this thing, there's two prongs in there. The prong on the far side 
is going to hook up to the diode that's going to turn it from AC to DC. And then the left side terminal is actually going to come down here and truncate to ground. And then watch what will happen here. Let me make a diagram. Here's the next step. So on the side that has the regular diode, we're basically going to trim this um, connector a little bit. You see this back end here? I'm going to cut it off before then. So all it has is this little crimp area and not the big crimp area in the back. Then I'm going to cut the tail on this diode shorter, put it in that crimp area, um, crimp it and solder it. So I want it to be shorter. Um, in fact, I want it to be probably so that the black part of the diode isn't too much farther past the back of that crimp area. On the other side, I made up a little pigtail here which has a quarter inch um, terminal on it which will wrap around and go to the ground screw here. I'm basically gonna do a very similar thing on this side. I'm gonna wrap this wire around the Zener diode. See the black line on the diode is to the right. So this is on the left side of that black line. And I'm gonna wrap that around it over here. And I'm gonna do the, the same drill. I'm gonna um, put it into this, cut off the little end, cut that shorter and solder them together. So let me see if I can cut and assemble and then we'll go from there. They're not soldered yet, but you get the idea. So now we're gonna solder them.